intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. Managing the intellectual property portfolio. This presentation is brought to you by the IP attorneys and professionals at Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers through the Halsey Intellectual Property Technology and Invention Monitor website. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers. IP professionals for entrepreneurship's new golden age. This presentation is part of the Technology and Invention Monitor website's Legal and Business Issues and Instructions resource. Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. Managing the Intellectual Property Portfolio. Let's begin the presentation. We'll take a view of the management structures necessary to extract the value from and manage the expenses, the costs, the corporate assets relative to the harvest of inventions and invention disclosures and creative ideas that have arisen from the activities that we described in Module 5 of motivating intellectual property performance. In Module 7, we'll talk about the financial performance relating to the management exercises and the management operations that we're discussing here. So what are the right processes necessary to obtain the greatest amount of value from the creative activities that a company pursues relative to its intellectual property rights? These right processes recognize that companies operate on different paradigms. It depends on what their market is. It depends on what their product strategy is. It depends on what the corporate history is. Are we talking about a startup? Are we talking about an established company? Are we talking about a purely domestic company in the United States? Are we talking about a multinational company? Are we talking about a company that contracts principally with the federal government or, or, or with other governments? Are we talking about companies who solely contribute and sell products to individuals for the small home office? Well, what is the paradigm for a company affects their intellectual property rights? What is the market? Is this a narrow market? Is it a very broad market? These are other considerations that affect what goes on in the management of a company's intellectual property portfolio. The management of an intellectual property portfolio also recognizes that an innovation or invention can occur in a number of different ways. One may be, for example, in the way of a breakthrough product or breakthrough development versus incremental development. In incremental development, such as, for example, in the personal computer industry, where much of the early innovation has taken place, Today, we're talking about small inventions, ways to become better, faster, cheaper in the personal computer market or breakthrough technologies that may exist even perhaps in the computer industry. Uh, what seems to be a breakthrough these days, even though in some ways it's incremental, is the market for and the technology relating to the tablet PC and the environment that's relating to that. Is that incremental or is it breakthrough? Many people would say that it's more incremental than breakthrough, but the things that you can do with the tablet that you can't do with a traditional notebook computer. So understanding the way that innovation can occur may very well affect the type of portfolio management that a kind of company undertakes. There may be simultaneous discoveries that occur completely independently. One of the, some of the more interesting stories of innovation that relate to the development of portfolio, that relate to the development of inventions, happens in Silicon Valley, such as the creation or the understanding of Philo Farnsworth and the creation of the television or the creation of the microwave, how that came out of the World War II creation of microwave antennas and some of the uh, discoveries that relate to the use of technology. And then the, the synergies that can exist, that can arise with the miniaturization of technologies. One of the areas that seems to be occurring, in, in which there seem to be occurring numbers of inventions, is in the area of nanotechnology, where in many different disciplines we're finding opportunities to model, to manufacture, to use 
products, to use devices, to use concepts in a scale that we have heretofore not been able to use. But so much of what's happened in nanotechnology has been a, uh, a coming together or synergy of many disciplines in the chemical industry, in the semiconductor device industry, in the biological industry, in the, in the industry of computer science and systems modeling, all seem to be converging at this point in an area where we are approaching essentially a new division, a new dimension of technology of simultaneous discoveries. And managing your portfolio Managing your inventive activities relative to this is becoming a very interesting opportunity for the exercise, the creative exercise of the management of an intellectual property portfolio. For example, in the development of a portfolio, in the development of intellectual property assets for a company, there seems to be the need for a balance of the recognition that in technology, there are and will be, just as there's been in philosophy and in the intellectual history of mankind, uh, great men such as Isaac Newton or such as Blaise Pascal who have created insights into the world, into the way of thinking that have been fundamental while at the same time around these people or the collection and under of understanding around these people have permitted the evolution of increased awareness of technology, the increased awareness of intellectual creativity. And this occurs in cultures such as a university. This occurs in cultures such as a, a, such as a, a, a corporation or a company. And the management of an IP portfolio that reflects this type of recognition is something that is important not only for the individual or individuals responsible exclusively for the portfolio, but those responsible for all the business activities that relate to the company. So what is the access, the, the, the function, uh, what goes on in the practice of patent portfolio management? Well, at its most fundamental level, it is asset management. A patent is an asset. A Trademark portfolio is an asset. A copyright portfolio is an asset. The portfolio manager is an asset manager. At its most fundamental and basic level, it needs to be treated and understood that that's a job of the IP portfolio manager. At the same time, the portfolio manager has something of a preemptive role or proactive role in making sure that in the management of this asset, he is the eyes and ears of the company oftentimes as to the intellectual property rights of others. And so in some ways he exercises or she exercises the, the manager, the IP, the patent portfolio or IP portfolio manager has something of a preemptive role and needs to make aware at the highest level of the company the assets that others are obtaining or have obtained. How is it different? How is the action of the patent portfolio management different? Well, in the proactive management of a patent portfolio, there are more drivers than just the dissemination of invention disclosures and the collection of them at the end of the day. The, I, the patent portfolio or IP portfolio manager operates within the company as a very pivotal player in understanding and synergizing the creative activities of scientists and inventors while reflecting on the financial and other characteristics of a company or organization's operations. And so in this management process, there may be a pivotal manager, but there are also people within the company who need to be involved. One may be a technology futurist. There are many of those, and in the Bay Area, such as uh, the Silicon Valley area, as well as other places in the country, you, you will find people who have the ability to see out farther and understand where technologies are going. And in the practice of portfolio management, 
there's the need to have these individuals involved. They may not necessarily be the particular manager of a patent portfolio, but they too need to be involved. And the managers themselves, they need to be top-down evangelists, provide to the organization. The phrase sometimes may be used as solicitation within the organization to make sure that the patent portfolio, the invention disclosures do get to the company, but that there also is the word out to the inventors that the company has a program such as the IBM a program that I described in Module 5, or that there are rewards and that there is incentive and that the development of a portfolio is for the benefit not only for the organization, but also for the individual inventors and scientists and creators as well. The manager has a very interesting role. The patent portfolio manager in some ways predicts the future. He looks outward and forward at technology trends. He coordinates and serves as a liaison with the specific technology futurist that he may be involved with and may himself be a technology futurist, but he has the ability to know where his technology is going and to use a phrase, connect the dots between where a portfolio may be, where market opportunities may exist, and where a company or organization is today. The manager himself also has the job of evaluating a competitor's developments using information from all resources. And I'll be describing in a later course some of those tools and how you can use not only the information in those tools, but some powerful analytical visualization techniques for the purpose of taking this information and identifying trends, or identifying heredities for a particular patent, identifying global coverage of a particular invention, uh, patent application or patent. And so the portfolio manager to a significant degree should make himself or herself facile with these types of sources. The patent portfolio manager also has the responsibility to search for key developments that will be needed in the patent portfolio area. For example, the idea, the opportunity, if you recall in an earlier module I talked about the situation of the visionary company. Well, the visionary company has an opportunity with the establishment of a patent portfolio man manager to start the practice of, in fact, being visionary, to invent and patent early before others do, even though there may not be particular business activities for which development or productization of a particular area may have been authorized or promoted yet by the company. The cost of filing either a provisional application, and we'll talk about that uh, as in, in a later module, or uh, filing a regular application that focuses on a up-and-coming technology. This is something that the portfolio manager, with a minimal expenditure of resources, can do for the benefit of the company. At the same time, there may be other inventions for which it makes sense for the portfolio manager not to expend corporate resources in the development of provisional or regular patent applications, but for the best interest of the company, make a decision to publish an innovation, to publish an invention, to put it into the public domain with a date stamped publication, such as, for example, the IBM Technical Bulletin or NASA's Technical Briefs. There are numerous places, uh, white papers on a corporate in internet. Uh, site that would make available to the public information that, for good reasons, the company has decided not to publish the applicant, not to pursue patent rights, but instead has said, I will publish it so that someone else can't later say that they are the original inventor when I'm the original inventor, or John Smith and our company is the original inventor. And by virtue of the publication, it becomes clear to the world that the original inventor is the person who's attributed in the publication. And therefore, while the company's not seeking patent rights, 
it will provide to the company freedom to move relative to others who may seek patent rights erroneously thinking that they are the inventor of the technology that's been published. The patent portfolio manager also will identify for the company critical patents of others and how they may or may not affect the portfolio of the company for which he or she works or the business opportunities that he or she is or that the company is pursuing. And by that, I mean there may be critical patents for one company, even yet in a competitive environment, that are not critical for another company. For example, there may be a cellular company that's focusing on tDNA technology, whereas a company such as Qualcomm, for example, would focus on cDNA technology. And where there may be a critical patent in a tDNA cell phone technology, that patent may not be relevant or, or of concern for a cDNA technology, but at the same time, that if there's a concern that there may be some carryover into the cDNA technology world, the portfolio manager may identify that and make the determination that it's not relevant, but even though it may be a very critical patent for the company focusing on the tDNA technology. The patent portfolio manager also, where there are patents, may help with the design around by virtue of him usually being, and I think almost essentially, a patent attorney knowledgeable of the claims that are in the company's patents and understanding the technology that those claims protect. And that if there is a critical patent of a competitor that arises, then the practice of knowing how and leading the engineers who are developing products to the practice of designing around these patents that may provide for the company, the company for which the patent portfolio manager works, a roadblock to its market because of the prior rights of the competing companies. The patent portfolio manager also assists with the invalidation of others' patents or if it's not possible to either design around a competitive patent or to invalidate a competitive patent, at that point, the patent portfolio manager has the opportunity with his superior knowledge of the company's patent portfolio, with his superior knowledge of the patent law, how to obtain the type of license necessary for securing the intellectual property rights from the critical patent holder in order for his company, in order for the patent portfolio manager's company to continue to pursue the market that the company, that his company is pursuing and still make the necessary profit it must make. So let's talk about the patent cooperation process and some of the key constituents of how we get to the process of determining whether or not it makes sense, given these disclosures that come from the creative process, to determine whether a filing should be made, and if so, what type of filing should be made. As you know, through the incentive process, such as the IBM process that I described, one of the first steps in managing the patent portfolio would be to prepare the invention disclosure. Now this can take any type of form. When we get to the, in, the anatomy of a patent application I, course, I'll present to you one or more examples of such a disclosure that may have some questions that could be asked of the inventor that would be a, a simple, straightforward form that could be used for the purpose of establishing this disclosure. Once the disclosure has been has been received, the next step in the process is to evaluate the invention. From the evaluation of the invention, it's possible to take the next step, and that is to provide to a PC meeting, a patent committee meeting, a, the, a set of invention disclosures that can be evaluated. And we'll talk in a minute about who plays a part in that activity for the purpose of determining which patents should be pursued and which patents should not be pursued. And then from that point, there's, this is where the 
functions of the patent portfolio manager began to uh, focus almost uh, exclusively, if not exclusively, on the contributions of the individual. That person has the portfolio, or those patent portfolio managers have the portfolio, and they are responsible for determining whether the, if there's an application to prepare, the application is prepared by an in-house activity, or whether it's prepared by outside counsel, we'll talk about that in a second, and then taking further actions on the disclosures. What if it's decided that a patent should not be pursued on this invention, but it's still, first of all, oftentimes a corporate trade secret, at least for a period of time, it's still corporate know-how, and it's still a valuable asset or potentially a valuable asset of the company. And so the portfolio manager needs to make a decision and help implement the steps in carrying out that decision for the benefit of the company. And along these lines, as I've described in the dynamic patent process, that the management also includes assessing the offensive use of patents, not only for the benefit of the company, but the offensive use of patents that others may have. So these are the processes that take place and these are the processes where the patent portfolio manager has significant involvement in the company. Let's talk about the patent committee review process. If I begin here in this diagram with an invention disclosure or sets of invention disclosure, these invention disclosures will go into the patent coordinated or patent, patent committee meeting. At that meeting, there are some key contributions to be made by a number of people in the organization. Now, given the size of the organization, there be, these functions may be performed by the same individual, but these functions need to be performed whether they're by the same or, or, or a smaller set of individuals or by their more, if they are by more individuals. So let's review what they are. One is to recede into the committee, either by live or, or, or meeting participation, the recommendations of the engineering managers as to the value or potential value of the invention described in invention disclosure. There is further the recommendation by the IP attorneys, particularly those responsible for the patent portfolio to which an invention disclosure may relate. There may be a general manager survey form or other type of input at the highest level to determine whether there are, from those who see the farthest or have the ability to see the farthest, such as the general managers or the CEO of the company, as to whether or not this particular patent or technology relates to an effort that the company is continuing to pursue. And then, normally, there are guidelines and checklists, and when we talk about the anatomy of the patent and what goes into the patent, we'll be talking about these guidelines and checklists for the purpose of determining whether or not a patent should be taken to a particular next step. And these are potentially mechanical in nature, but at least they provide a mechanism to make sure that a consideration as to whether a patent invention disclosure should be published, we talked about the reasons for publication, whether it should be kept solely as a trade secret, or whether a patent application should be obtained. And so out of this meeting is a decision as to one of these options, the publication, the retention as a trade secret, or the, app, or the pre preparation of a patent application. And these days, based on the policy that a corporation may undertake, as to whether or not the application should be published as a, or should be filed as a provisional application or as a regular application under the United States laws for those to be filed in the United States. And then the further decision to be made is whether the in-house legal staff or outside counsel will prepare the patent filing. And from this point, these processes Every one of the invention disclosures that are reviewed in the patent coordinator meeting will go through a process uh, to more one degree or another relative to each one of these inputs 
and each one of these decisions that come from the, the that come from the meeting. As a result of these efforts, cumulatively over time, cumulatively over time, a company will create a patent portfolio. And as I mentioned, some of these activities that the patent portfolio manager has to deal with deal address both patents that have substantial value and those that have lost value. For those that have lost value in a particular portfolio, over time a company may create a very substantial portfolio and for those that have lost value, there may be those that are short-lived and irrelevant. There also may be those that are simple solutions to specific problems. There may be patents on strategic technologies that are important for the company. And these patents require a different treatment. They may be market-based. These patents may cover, for example, competitors and substitutors for a particular product or line of endeavor for a company. They may involve the assets of complementers. By that is meant the structures that, and functions and business assets that are necessary to take a product to the marketplace. And in, this, in the next module, we'll talk about the technology or the innovation utilization process and how the concept of complementary assets relates to the decisions that are being made that need to be made by the patent portfolio manager. There may be inventions that are of importance to downstream customers, and there may be those that are of importance to upstream suppliers or vendors to the company. And these patents may be used for a number of reasons, not the least of which may be to cross-license from a vendor or license to a vendor for the purpose of reducing the cost to the inventor or to, to the company of the supplies and services that the vendor provides, giving the vendor the ability to go out in the marketplace and obtain better results, better financial results from the use of these intellectual property rights. And then the patents on strategic technologies may find, you may find in that portfolio corporate based technical jewels. These are the most important patents. Oftentimes these may be in number, the smallest number of patents, but may be clearly the most important patents for the company. With regard to those patents that have lost value, the function of the patent portfolio manager is to weed these out, to figure out where he can save valuable corporate research, resources, corporate money, and not maintaining and not filing maintenance fees and not continuing the portfolio or perhaps even selling those. Remember, a patent that may be of little value to one company may be of substantial value to another. Perhaps the best thing that that company can do through the patent portfolio manager is sell or maybe donate the patent. When we talk about licensing of patents, we'll talk about the donation of patent rights and intellectual property rights to nonprofit organizations like universities. And that may be a thing that the, an action that a patent portfolio manager can pursue for the benefit of his company. For those that are of the highest value and most strategic benefit to the company, the patent portfolio manager can develop, can take these technologies and may use them for acquiring disruptive technologies through cross-licensing or maybe focus on these technical jewels and indicate to the business managers and those running the company the critical importance of taking these valuable patent rights and these valuable innovations and developing them further for the purpose of identifying a market position that could yield significant financial results for the company in the future. And so in summary, in this module, we have discussed the patent portfolio management functions and roles. What these portfolio functions are, who the participants are, the part they play in the patent committee meeting. We talked about the inputs into the IP review committee meeting, and we talked about some of the port portfolio or patent portfolio 
extraction basics. We'll talk about that more further in Module 7, where we begin to address the IP portfolio financial performance that will set the stage for further courses in this series relating to licensing and value extraction from the intellectual property portfolio. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for viewing Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. Motivating Intellectual Property Performance. Be sure to visit us at www.halseyiplaw.com. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers. IP Professionals for Entrepreneurship's New Golden Age. This is Bill Halsey.